Dear students, welcome to all of you uh, in the very first week of the course Introduction to Fundamentals of Information Technology. I am Professor Asim Zafar. I am Professor in the Department of Computer Science, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. So today uh, we will be discussing with you the various concepts related to computers and information technology. So in this part, basically, we plan to discuss with you the introduction to computers and IT. We will be discussing history and evolution of computer system. We will be discussing with you what are various kinds of pro computer programs, softwares, hardware, and about firmware. We will be discussing with you the kernel and their types. Basic, basically, this is a part of the operating system. We will be, discuss, uh, we'll be discussing all these things during uh, the next part. What are the what are various types of compilers, interpreters, parsers, and assemblers? We will have a look on that. And after that, we will have a detailed look on operating system and their types, computer memory and classification, and prominent application area. So this is the topic of discussion for the week one lecture. First of all, uh, I'll start my discussion with the introduction to computers and IT. And in this series, first of all, we will discuss what is a computer. So a computer can be an electronic device that can store and process large amount of data quickly and accurately. So in layman uh, term, you can define the computer as an electronic device which can process the data at an incredibly faster speed with high level of accuracy. Uh, as far as the computers are concerned, basically, as I have told you, that these are electronic devices. So these consist of two main parts or components, I mean to say, that is hardware and software components. Hardware components include all the physical part of the computer, like memory, CPU, input and output devices, which we can touch, see, and repair in case of any damage has gone to these <laughs> devices. While the software component includes the application and programming part, programs basically, which are installed in the computer. Uh, they may be the application program, system programs, and uh, like many other uh, utility programs, which makes our computer or hardware usable basically. So they are known as the software component. Uh, the CPU, the central processing unit, basically is the brain of the computer. You can say the main component of the computer system and it can be called as the brain of the computer as it controls all its uh, function. It will execute instruction, perform logical operation, data manipulations, etc. The storage devices like hard drives and solid state drives store a large number of or large amount of information uh, for long term basically. The operating system is the software that manages the computer's resources. Operating system allocates processes accordingly. It also provides a user interface for interaction. Here in the diagram, you can see uh, that at the core we do have at the core we do have the hardware that is the CPU or related devices which performs your desired tasks. But it is difficult for us being human being. We cannot directly communicate with the hardware because they understand the language of one and zero, that is binary language. So to pass on all the instructions in binary language is very uh, difficult. So in that case, what do, you, why do what do we have basically? We have this layer that is known as operating system. You just see here over that. So these operating system basically interact with the hardware. And above that, above that we do have several programs, several user uh, programs. Maybe user or system program, maybe compiler, maybe assembler, maybe database system, or maybe some editing program, editing applications basically, which are there. This user are interacting using these application interfaces with the operating system, and the operating system is passing on the instruction to the hardware in such a language which is understood by the hardware. Accordingly, the hardware responds and gives back the processed result to the operating system, which is in turn being passed on to the user. And this is how the things happen uh, in this scheme, basically. 
application softwares are a special kind of softwares basically which performs a specific task like video editing word processing gaming while the system softwares allows you uh, or allows the systems allows you to make optimal use of the system uh, to allow you to interact with the hardware directly like maybe assembler operating system etc they are known as system softwares uh, here we can have uh, a look on that basically so you see here uh, the computer system is there and you can see here the computer system is the cpu is there in the box basically you can see uh, the monitor is there keyboard is there mouse is there speaker is there and some internal components has been shown over here so you can see there's a uh, power supply component is there uh, which is compacted in terms of a in terms of a cabinet basically so dvd rom is there motherboard is there you can see the cpu cpu fan ram is there vga so all these components are uh, assembled in the rack which you are seeing over here so this is the uh, diagram of a computer uh, system basically you can say uh, while in the, in the right hand side you can see that we do have optical devices magnetic storage devices and flash memory devices these are the various kind of devices over here in the lower part you can see various kinds of operating system uh, like you can see mac linux windows operating system is there dos operating system is there unix operating system is there ubuntu is another version of the operating system so these are various kinds of operating systems which are uh, available in the left hand side uppermost corner you can see a brighter picture of cpu they are known as the central processing uh, unit so this is basically a look of the various components of computer systems when we analyze the block diagram of the computer system we can see here that the main component is uh, having the cpu the cpu basically consists of three parts control unit memory unit and alu arithmetic and logic unit and we give the instructions to the computer through input devices and whatsoever in result are there that has being displayed on the output devices so a cpu that is known as central processing unit is the computer's primary component that processes data and instruction and is often called as brain of the computer a cpu comprises of three parts as i have already told you cu that is control unit arithmetic and logic unit and memory unit we will have a look of all these three one by one so first of all we will have a look on the control unit the control unit is a component of computers central processing unit that directs the operation of the processor a control unit typically uses a binary decoder to convert to convert coded instruction into timing and control signals that direct the operations of other units most computer resources are managed by cu that is known as control unit so you just see here whenever you give some instructions through input devices first it goes to the computer main memory from the main memory it goes to the register from register it goes to the arithmetic and logic unit and all such operations are being controlled by uh, cu from and once the result is there say for the example some calculation are done by arithmetic and logic unit the result is again passed on to the registers from register is go to main memory from main memory it goes to the output devices but from where the instruction will go to which place all such kind of things are being controlled by the cu so cu is the main controlling unit that's why it is known as uh, cu so here you can see that cu is controlling the input device alu output device secondary devices and registers means memories as well so the key component of the cpu is control unit which is controlling all the devices while uh, arithmetic and logic unit is responsible for performing the arithmetic and bitwise operations on integer binary numbers this is in contrast to a floating num floating point unit which operates on floating point number as well registers 
CPU registers are a small memory locations basically in a computer's central processing unit that stores data and instructions and help the CPU process information quickly. Memory, the main memory basically is a computer's built-in memory that stores data and instructions for quick access by the CPU. So whatsoever informations are coming from the input unit or what is the information which will be displayed. So all these things are being managed uh, through this main memory. So now uh, after knowing about the anatomy of the computer system, we will be discussing some important characteristics of the computers. As I have already told you that computer can operate at a very or incredibly faster speed. So the first characteristic is speed. So they can work faster than human. They can process the information in gigahertz. The speed proves to be very useful in scientific calculations, video editing and complex simulations. Another thing is that the can the computers can act at with an incredible speed and they can process the data more accurately so accuracy is another characteristic of the computer system so they are highly accurate and can perform calculations with large precision they never make mistakes like human due to distraction or forgetfulness they will follow the programmed instruction resulting in accurate results Diligence is another characteristic. So computer can work for longer period of time without getting tired or distracted. Another characteristic is known as flexibility. The computers can be programmed to perform a wide range of tasks from simple calculations to complex operations. Characteristics of computer system further include the consistency. Computer are consistent in their performance, which means they can perform the same task repeatedly without any variation in their output. Computer can store a large or huge amount of data. The modern computers can store data in terms of terabytes, input, output and processing. Computer can perform four main actions that is they can input the information, they can store the information, they can process the information and they can output the results. Further, versatility is another characteristic. Versatility means they can perform a wide range of uh, tasks from simple calculations to complex calculations. So nowadays computer is not only being used to process the data for it is being used for a wider number of applications. So in that sense the computer are versatile. Automation is another characteristic. They can automate or uh, automate repeated tasks which can save time and improve efficiency. Automation can be achieved through software programs or hardware devices such as uh, robots or sensors. Uh, the computer can remember the things for a longer period of time by storing the data in their uh, memory devices. So the ability to store and retrieve large amount of data quickly and efficiently is another characteristic of the computer systems. They are useful in data analysis, research and decision making tasks. Reliability is uh, another uh, characteristic of computer system. We can rely on computers as they can perform tasks without breaking down or malfunctioning. Scalability is another uh, characteristic. The computers can be scaled according to the needs of the user. We can either increase the capacity or decrease the capacity. Multitasking is another characteristic that is the ability to perform various tasks simultaneously. Programmability is another characteristic. The computer can be programmed to manipulate the symbols and execute, execute the stored list of instructions called a program in a variety of ways. So they can uh, execute the programs which are written by the programmers and accordingly they can produce the result. But there are certain limitations of the computer system as well. So lack of creativity, limited memory, inability to learn are some of the limitations of the computer systems. Uh, computers are unable to create in the same way that human can be. They can perform tasks that are programmed into them, but they cannot think outside the box or come up with new ideas of their own. Another thing is that the limited memory. While computers have the ability to store vast amount of data, they have a finite amount of memory. This means that they can only handle to much information at once and they may struggle with complex tasks 
that require a lot of data processing. Inability to learn. While computers can be programmed to learn and adopt in new situations, they cannot learn in the same way that humans can. They do not have the ability to think critically or make decisions based on instinct or intuition. Nowadays, we do have the machine learning applications, AI applications, where we do claim that the computers can learn through machine learning uh, algorithms, but they still they lack the instinct or intuition sort of thing which the human brain has. Further, they lack creativity. Computers are unable to be creative in the same way that humans can be. They can perform tasks that are programmed into them, but they cannot think outside the box or come up with new ideas of their own. Dependence on power. Computers require a constant supply of electricity to function. This means that they cannot be used in the area where there is no power supply, such as in remote locations or during power outage. Vulnerability to virus and hacking. Computers are vulnerable to virus and hacking attacks, which can compromise the security of sensitive information and cause serious damage to the information which are stored on the system. Lack of emotional intelligence. Computers are unable to understand human emotions or communicate on emotional level. They can recognize certain emotions based on program responses, but they cannot truly empathize. Means computers are unable to understand human emotions and communicate on emotional level. They can recognize certain emotions, but on programmed responses, but they cannot truly empathize with human beings. Environmental impact. Production and disposal of computers have significant environmental impact, including the use of non-renewable resources, the emission of greenhouse gases, and the creation of electronic waste. Dependence on software. Computers rely fully on software to perform their tasks, which means that they are only as good as the software that is available to them. If there is no software available to perform certain tasks, the computer cannot perform. So these are some of the limitations of the uh, computer uh, systems. Okay, students. So next day, we will be discussing with you about the history and generation of computer systems. So we stop our discussion over here. And next day, we will be discussing history and generation of computer system. Thank you very much.